record if you wanted to. Okay, so the second way you could find a thesis. Start at the library website again. This time you're going to go to the key. <coughs> When you go to the KEEP, it's a particular website. This is our institutional repository that we have here at Eastern. And what you might notice is in the center of the page, there's these different sections. One of the sections is student theses and publications. And if I click that link and I go to that page, what I will see is we have digitized collection of the Warbler, which is our, cat, our, um, our uh, yearbook. Daily Eastern News, we've been digitizing that. It's currently back to 1975. And we have master's theses here. So I could click the master's theses link. And I could search in that collection for quality management. And then just do the <coughs> So that's your second way you could answer this first question. How do you find a thesis? You would say library website, the key, student uh, publications, master's thesis. And then find one, get the information from it, to then cite it. You would cite in APA format. So be sure you do one of those two things. You either search in the catalog, topic, Eastern Illinois University, thesis is your search terms or you come to the keep to this collection. If you do that, you will record a thesis and you'll get the you'll get the correct points for that. Okay. Are we all okay with that? All right. Now the next section is what you pretty much do a lot and that's find articles. Um, so we're going to go back to the main page. The articles tab is the main tab that we first land you on when you come here because most of the time that's what people are looking for is articles. We do have a couple of resources here. We have specifically <coughs> newspapers, specifically databases, specifically referenced resources. These are special collections that you might use depending on what your needs are. I'm going to go ahead and use the main search box and I'm going to do again total quality management and click go. Now remember what I said earlier, if you're in the catalog search, the, the way you narrow your search is on the right hand side. Databases, the narrowing is on the left. So I've got 17,000 results for total quality management, that's way too many, so here's how I narrow this down. Limit to, number one, full text. And I do that because I only want to see articles that I can actually print out. So I've limited the full text, I'm down to 10,000 items. The next step is limit to scholarly peer review. Dr. Wahabi wants you to use academic sources by limiting to scholarly peer review. That's how you do that. I'm now down to 7,700 resources. I might want to consider only items in the last 10 years or so about quality management. I could change the publication date here. Now I'm down to 2,891 resources. That's still too many. So I'm going to narrow it further by adding a term here to narrow down total quality management. What's an aspect of total quality management that you would like to focus on? Communication. Communication? Okay. So let's do total quality management and communication. Good. Now we're down to 241 records. That's reasonable. That's a good sized set of articles to look at. So what this question is asking you is describe, number one, describe selecting an article database or use the search box on the main page. We use the search box. Include the reasoning why you're making the selection you did. Basically, I would just say, I'm doing a broad search on this particular topic. I use the database's search on the main page. That's how you would describe searching. If you refine your results, you could add that. You could say, I limited to full text. I limited to scholarly peer review. Once you get to this point, now you're getting to the second part of that, which is cite the article. So I have an article here. I'm going to use the first one. To get to the full text of the article is what you would do is you would click on the PDF full text here. That's how you actually get to the full text you can print out. So when you need articles for your paper, that's what you would do. To answer this question, the citation, what you do is this. 
you click on the title, and when you click on the title, you'll see over here on the right is a section called Tools. One of the tools is Print. This print does not print the article. This tool prints the citation. So if I click Print, I get a pop-up box here that says Pick a Citation Format. I can pick APA, and I can click Print. And if I move the print box out of the way, you can see here is this article in APA format. You can copy and paste that into your D2L item. Be careful that you check. Sometimes they have typos. So you want to correct the typos. But that's how you can get the APA citation. Anytime you're using an article, what I would do when you're doing searching for your papers, how many resources do they need? Five, six. Five or six. If you're getting like five articles for your, your paper topic, print them out full text. So that's the one print that you're going to do. The second print is do this. Print out your citation. So you've got your citation. Is there any way to save it digitally? Yes. You can actually send the citation uh, to yourself by email instead of printing it out. Um, let's see if I go back. It wants to close this. I could do email here. And the same thing, I pick the citation format, I put in my, my uh, email to, and then click send. And it, it will email the citation to me. And can email the text also? Yeah, anything is emailable? Yes. Okay. Okay, any questions for answering the article part? Those of you who are doers, did you do this? Did it make sense to you? Okay. We have two more sections left. One is databases. Now, this section is a particular reason why I ask you this. A lot of times students will come to the main page, they'll use that main search box, and that's all they really need, and that's fine. But sometimes, they really should be using other databases that we have. We pay a lot of money every year to access databases that are particular to your different subjects. So if you come to Research by Subject tab, you'll see we have all these different subjects here, one of which is technology. And if you click technology, then you go to this page, which is a particular collection of databases related to technology. And my picture's there because I'm the liaison librarian for this subject. So what you've got here for this question, pick three databases, name them, describe how they're different. What you would do is you would say, I'm going to use um, Applied Science and Technology Abstracts because it covers manufacturing and total quality management is a big thing in manufacturing. So I'm going to say I'm going to use this database because it includes peer-reviewed content and it covers manufacturing. I'm also going to use Safari Textbooks Online because it covers business, which is another uh, area where they, they look at total quality management. And I'm also going to use Springer Link. It includes peer-reviewed content, and it has items, publication dates from 2005 to 2015. Basically, what you're doing is you're picking three databases that you think apply to your topic, telling me which three databases you picked, write a little something about each one. That's how you do that section. Are you all going to remember how you got to this page? OK? OK. Last part, academic dishonesty. Here in the United States, plagiarism means something very particular. Plagiarism is stricter here in the United States than it is in other countries around the world. You can get an F from your uh, professor. You could be asked to leave the university if you plagiarize. So you have to be really careful not to plagiarize. So ways that you avoid plagiarism. Uh, there are actually four different ways you can do it. What's one of them? Well, let's define plagiarism first. Let's define plagiarism. Plagiarism is you've, you've essentially you've copied someone else's words without giving them credit. And you, you've used it as your own work. That's essentially what plagiarism is. So what's one way to avoid plagiarism? So copying from others and citing them is all right. Right. Copying from others and citing them is all right. Sorry, what did you say? Referencing them. Referencing them, exactly. Um, one way is you cite them. So in the text of your writing, when you are quoting from someone else's paper that you've read, 
you want to include the citation to that paper. So if you are, what's your name again? Kartik. 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 So if Kartik is using my paper, he would say Bruns, comma, whatever year it was I published my paper. That's citing. So you want to cite within the text. You also want to have a bibliography at the end of your paper. That's a list of the sources that you used. That's the second way you avoid plagiarism. The third way is quoting. If you use more than three words in a row from my article, you have to use quotes. Okay? You have to, you have to be, according to Bruns, quote, blah, 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 quote, parentheses, you would put Bruns, comma, year. Then you have not plagiarized. The fourth way you avoid plagiarizing is you paraphrase. And that's the most important way to avoid plagiarizing. Dr. Wabi is asking you to find five or six resources to write about a subject that you choose. He does not want five or six pages of you just quote this author, quote this author, quote this author. He wants to know what you think. So the whole process is you pick out five or six articles, you read them, you think about them, you absorb them, and you're going to be quoting, you're going to be citing, but you're also going to be talking what you're, you're also going to be saying what your thoughts are about this particular topic. And that's the paraphrasing. Now sometimes you will paraphrase referring to a paper. So you might say, like, Dr. Wabi has a paper on topic, I have a paper on topic, and um, what's your name again? Uh, Mark. Mark has a paper on topic. You might say, you know, some people believe now technology is dangerous, and then you would put in parentheses cite all three of us, because all three of our papers have said that. So sometimes a paraphrasing is referring to something you're citing, but oftentimes paraphrasing is you're just putting into your own words what you think about this particular topic. So for this part, par avoiding academic dishonesty, four different possible answers, you just need to give me three of those four. Any questions about that? So in one of my courses, I heard that uh, paraphrasing is also papers. If you don't cite it, it can be, yeah. If you um, have a paragraph where you write about total quality management, and it's not knowledge that you could possibly know, but you've gleaned from what Dr. Wabi and I wrote, you don't cite us, even if you paraphrased it, that is plagiarism, yes. You have to be really careful, err on the side of citing. If you're not sure, cite it. <coughs> and as I mentioned, if you use more than three words in a row, quotes. You have to quote. So the answer you 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 mean uh, you need to show in the codes either are uh, the paraphrasing like this or three answers you 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 want. Yes, three so answers. More than three words should be in right quote. You know, your like your three answers. With it, with it, yeah. Your three answers for this quote this question yeah. would be paraphrasing could be one. Uh -huh. Using quotes yeah. is another one. Citing is another one. Yeah. Bibliography yeah. is another one. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, so what if I'm experimenting something on my lab, and I get the same result, let's say before 50 years ago, some scientists got right. Mm -hmm. So, what I do in that case, because I cannot differ, right? That's the fact. That is fact. Right. In that case, you would say, I did this experiment. Here is my result. Okay. You are you are establishing it as yours. Okay. Now, ideally, as a scholar, what you would be saying is, I did this experiment. Here is what I found, which is identical to what so-and-so found 50 years ago. Okay. Because ideally, you have researched your field, you know what other people have done. But you might not always know that. Yeah. If you don't always know that, you're describing your work. Make it clear it's your work. Other questions about avoiding academic dishonesty? Yes, sir. Sometimes, as much as you read the articles or the information, it's stuck in your mind, and you didn't realize later it's someone idea or someone thought and what about that if someone wrote it and after that he realized he this idea or this uh, information came from the source and he didn't uh, cite it unless it's word for word verbatim it's not likely to be noticeable right it's it's probably in the case you're describing what you're basically describing is I read this article Months later, I'm writing a paper. I don't quite remember reading that article, but the knowledge is still up here. So now I'm writing and I'm paraphrasing and I'm putting in my own words, and I forget to cite that other article. That could probably pass as not being plagiarism because it could be conceived as 
maybe this guy knew this, right? So what you're, what you're getting at with plagiarism in that case is someone would have to know the stuff that, that you've already previously read. And you know, is that making sense to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In other words, it, that, that I could probably see that that, uh, that as being uh, an understandable accident. But normally, you're not going to have a situation like that. Normally, you're going to be writing a paper, and if you've been reading articles for six months on this paper you're writing, you should actually be going back and rereading them. You should know them pretty well. So there shouldn't be this case of, I read something, but now I don't remember I read it, but I think it's all up here. That shouldn't really happen. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let us face it. I mean, all the knowledge we know today were accumulated from readings and newspapers and media. And so after a year, it became part of me. Yeah. That's my belief, my, my knowledge. So I can't really cite everybody because actually every knowledge I have I had learned it from childhood from everybody. Right, right. There are things that are considered common knowledge. Yes. You know. In this day and age in particular, mm -hmm. you have to be very careful about your sources. There are a lot of fake sources out there. There's a lot of fake news. There's a lot of... So now a lot of times when people say, oh, I know this, they're actually saying something from the internet that is not actually true. They read it somewhere. They read it on the website. They saw somebody quoted on Facebook and it's not actually true. Verify your sources. So it's not just plagiarism, it's also getting accurate information. <coughs> Very good. Any other questions about this? How do you guys feel about the assignment? Do you feel you could pretty much do this, get all 50 points, you're okay with it? Okay. You, this is yours to take with you if you've made any notes. Um, just take this with you, it will help you do the online assignment. If you have any questions, email me, stop by the desk. Let me know. Or just stop by the desk at any time. Any librarian can help you with any of this. They know this just as much as I do. Okay. Any other questions?